Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Thank you very much, Kate. It's fantastic to be here. Good evening. Oh, that's lousy. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Well, despite all appearances to the contrary, I am old. <laughs> a few years ago, they named a school after me in the Netherlands. That's not the important thing. The, the school was celebrating its 400th anniversary, and, and my wife and I went to this little village in, in Holland, and uh, when we arrived, a little girl came up to me and said, were you here when the school started? I thought I, I knew I was decrepit, but not quite, quite that decrepit. Well, why have I come? I have come actually because it is a very great privilege for me. And the privilege is I want to salute you, for you are a fantastic bunch of human beings. I mean, you have amongst you, people who are already leaders. The youngest racing pilot. You have a young man who is going to be the youngest to walk to the Arctic North Pole. Yay! <laughs> it's cold here. I don't know what it would be like there. And then you, you gave a warm clap for someone who survived the Haiti disaster. You have, you have some people here who are already investment bankers. Fantastic. And I come to salute you. I come because Young people are such a fantastic group of people. You dream, you dream dreams. You dream dreams of a world that is, that is without war. You dream dreams and you say, let us make poverty history. And I get very upset with you media, you know. <laughs> I get, I get very upset with you because you go around telling people what is only part of the truth. You say, just look at these young people who go off the rails. Of course there are young people who do go off the rails. But it's amazing. It's amazing. You know, when I was growing up, the only drug they had around was marijuana. <laughs> what about today? You young people are exposed to some of the most horrendous things. Cocaine, all of those rough stuff, man. <laughs> hey. And, and you, you are people who are exposed to some of the most awful, pressured advertising. They tell you, if you want to be cool, man, you've got, you got to buy this, you've got to buy the other, you've got to buy... And, uh, when I was growing up, we didn't have internet. And I'm told, I'm told, I'm told there are some extraordinary things you can see on the internet. <laughs> oi, 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 oi. I, I, I don't know. I haven't seen them. I have been told. <clears throat> and what?
good happens. Young people like yourselves are exposed to all of these pressures. What ought to surprise us is not that some young people succumb and go off the rails. What should be surprising us? What should be making us say, yee, they really are fantastic, is that so many don't. And I've visited a number of poor countries, and in remote villages, I found young people who come from opulent places, working away hidden, teaching schools in poor, remote villages. You guys, you, you don't tell the world about them. You don't tell the world about those kids who use a gap year and say, I'm not going to go to university this year. I want to be able to do something, and they go off and are volunteers. You don't tell us about those kids. Hello? Hello? <laughs> do you? Do you? No. We, you, you ought to. <laughs> You ought to tell the world that these young people dream dreams. They dream the dream of God. I was in Copenhagen, and most of the people who were demonstrating there, who were passionate, were young people. A hundred thousand young people went out on the streets of Copenhagen, and I can tell you, it wasn't what, it was Coco. <laughs> but they were out there, out there saying, hey, you oldies, why don't you care about carbon emissions? Hey, you oldies, the ice is melting in the Arctic. The polar bears are drowning. It's happening. The sea level is rising. There are islands now that risk being submerged. We're not talking theory. Please, old people, it's real. Young people. And it's quite amazing. You know, God, God has been using young people from the year dot. Joseph, David kills a big Goliath. Francis of Assisi, and then you. God is going to be using you to say to us oldies, hey, when are you going to get it into your head? Just look at how much you are spending on guns. Look at how much you are spending When, when a very, very, very small fraction of your budgets of death would ensure that children everywhere in the world had clean water to drink, had enough food to eat, had a decent home. I mean, we oldies have got the world. How many, how many wars have we started? They were not started by young people. And most of those who start the wars, <laughs> you think you'll find them on the front line? No, no, no. They are sitting comfortably at home and watching other people's children die. So, 
I come to you and say, hey, just go on being idealistic. Just go on dreaming that we are going to have a different kind of world than the one that we are leaving you. We're going to have a, uh, when we come back, when we come back, when we come back, I mean, we may be ghosts when we come back, but I mean, when we come back, when we come back and we look at what you have done, we're going to be surprised. We're going to see a world, hey, there's no longer any poverty. There's no longer any hunger. There's no longer any war. Hey, 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 you, 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 you are going to make this a beautiful, beautiful world. You know what? As I look around, I can see, I can see, I can see, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. I can see so, so, no, Nobel Peace Laureate eh? around here. I, can, eh? I look around and I see. A few years ago, I was with a group of fellow Nobel laureates, and, and we were with a group of about uh, 3,000 young people, and they, uh, and they asked, uh, what does it take to become a, a, a Peace Laureate? I said, oh, no, 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 that's very simple, man, very simple. It takes three things. You must have a, an, an easy name. <laughs> tutu, tutu, tutu. <clears throat> and, you, and you must have a large nose. Uh, and, and because we were in Bali, it was very war, warm and I was, I was wearing shorts. And I said, the third thing that you need is a pair of sexy legs. Uh, well, what was I saying? Nobel laureates don't fall, don't fall ready-made from, from heaven. They are ordinary human beings. There's, where is Yunus, uh, Muhammad Yunus? Where are you? There, 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 there. <laughs> and, and so, and so I look around and I see, I see, I see some fantastic things, man. I see you are people who are going to make this a beautiful world. And you are going to put a smile on the face of Bob Geldof. I'm trying to get him to comb his hair. Um, <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a lovely guy. I love you, man. You, you are a fantastic guy. But you, I, 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 want, I want to ask you to do me just one little favor. I think you are fantastic. And I want to clap you. But if I clap you all by myself, people will say, ah, oh, we always thought, no, <laughs> not, so, Please join me in clapping some of the most fantastic human beings in the world. You, come on, join! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.